roll call vote, please. Council Member Sackiewicz? Here. Council Member Wigan? Here. Council Member Smith? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Pogancourt? Here. And Mayor, da Mayor Davies? Here. Everyone is here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, if we get everybody to stand up for the pledge uh, to the flag. Invocation. Invocation. And the invocation. Thank you. Uh, Susan, can you lead us? Invocation is first and then pledge. Yeah. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Chris Ross from the Mountain Bible Church. We'll give her an invitation. Let's Thank pray. You. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and welcome your presence among us this evening. We ask that you guard and guide all those who serve and protect the city of Tehachapi. Our dependence on your grace is total, not partial. Our need for your forgiveness is constant, and our gratitude for your provision is profound. We ask that you truly unite us as one nation under God, and that your will would come to pass in this valley. May integrity and humility characterize our city. In the Lord's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Mayor, we can do the pockets first. Okay. So, all right. Hmm. So, uh, community engagement reports. Uh, Key Budge will come to the podium. Thank you, sir. What I would like to do is invite uh, members of American Legion Auxiliary Unit Post 221. I'd like to invite you to come forward and explain exactly what the Poppy Days are. Uh, President Sandy Phillips, also present tonight, Janet Teehee, Jennifer Stanley, Lynn Eckert, and Carrie Miller. Wait, Here. Yeah, right here. Okay. Then we'll get you all to take a photo. Here, you can use the microphone. Oh, no, I don't think okay, so. then you're perfect right there. <laughs> um, we will be handing out poppies um, the month of the third week in May, and all of the money collected stays in Tehachapi for our veterans. It's all by donation. We don't ask that you pay anything. I'm asking Lynn to read the Flanders Field Poppy Poem. John McRae wrote the poem in Flanders Field, which inspired the use of the poppy as a symbol of remembrance. In the spring of 1915, shortly after losing a friend in Yippers, I think, a Canadian doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, wrote his now famous poem after seeing poppies growing in the battle-scarred fields. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, fell down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up out quarrel with the foe to you from falling hands we throw the roads by yours to hold it high if you break faith with us who die we shall now sleep through the pop though the poppies grow in flounders thank you this poppy uh, was made from a direct descendant of the um, author so this is very special to me and I want you to know that our po the poppies are made by veterans that 
don't have other jobs or other other means of support. So it's really special um, to veterans, um, especially to all of us. And honorable babies, you get the first poppy of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then, Mayor, we'd like to invite you to bring the proclamation and read the proclamation, and we'll get, a, get some nice photos. All right. So, Certificate of Proclamation. The Tatchby City Council would like to proclaim May 13th May 20th, through May 20th as Poppy Days to encourage all citizens to pay tribute to those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy on these days. The Tatchby City Council would like to thank the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 221 for their efforts in supporting this cause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tatchby Police Officer Vincent Clark, if he will come forward, please. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Raise your right hand, and then I'll just read the oath, and then you just say yes. I, Vincent Clark, do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Yes. Congratulations. Vincent Clark joins us from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department where he did four years. Um, he will be on modified training since he's already patrol trained and his fiance Danielle would like to come pin his badge. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Consent items will be considered at first and may be approved with mo one motion if no member of the council or audience wishes to comment or ask questions. If a comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in listed sequence with the opportunity for any uh, member of the public to address the uh, uh, member of the city council concerning item that is taken. Do we have anybody that needs to have anything removed from the consent item from the public? Council? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Sakowitz? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Wiggins? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Court? Yes. Mayor Davies? Yes. 5 0 vote, motion carried. Thank you. Audience oral and written communications. Uh, do we have any? Uh, Nothing written. Okay. Do we have anybody in the pub, uh, from the public would like to make any communicate uh, comments to the council tonight? Okay, I see none. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I need to recuse, <laughs> right, uh, number 11, uh, need to recuse myself because I'm an employee of RSI. It's RSI disburment, uh, disbursements for bills, uh, uh, March 29th through April 25th. Uh, Bogey, if you'll take over the meeting. Do we have any uh, comments, yeah, questions, comments public. or public questions and comments? Anything for RSI Petroleum? Make a motion to accept. Second it. All those in, oh, never mind. Councilmember Sackowitz? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Wiggins? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Court? Yes. There's a 4 0 vote with a recusal from Mayor Davies. Comments from 
uh, Don Marsh on item 18. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Darren Davies and uh, council members. So I'll apologize up front for the lengthy staff report. Um, but this is a very important issue that the city will be facing over the next uh, probably decade, honestly. Um, but to give you a little background, uh, the California Air Resources Board is charged with protecting the public from harmful effects of air pollution and developing programs and actions to fight climate change. The board is made up of 16 appointed members. Most of those are appointed by the governor, some from the legislature. Uh, and this board it has a wide-reaching authority and power, uh, and I want to emphasize that they have extreme power, to implement and enforce regulations related to air quality within the state of California. CARB has uh, recently implemented and is currently developing new regulations that will significantly impact the operations of the Public work, Works Department and the city's capital planning for vehicle and equipment purchases and replacements. Um, the first regulation, actually, this was in, implemented, voted on and implemented last Friday uh, by CARB, and um, so it's no longer proposed, it is, it is actually in effect. And uh, so CARB is developing a medium and heavy duty zero emission fleet regulation. And what that means is electric vehicles. Um, their goal is a, of achieving a zero emission truck and bus fleet and to accelerate the number of medium and heavy duty zero emission vehicle purchases to achieve a full transi transition to zero emission vehicles in California. So it is their goal of no internal combustion engine vehicles, period. Everything electric. Um, some of the vehicles that are affected by this specific reg regulation um, include medium and heavy duty vehicles and light duty mail and package delivery vehicles. This is semi trucks, this is the FedEx truck that delivers to your house, this is the guy who delivers bread to the grocery store or to the restaurants, uh, this is um, beer trucks, this is uh, beverage deliveries, uh, all of those trucks, the expectation is that those will be uh, electric. And uh, in addition to that, it's everything basically a three-quarter ton truck pickup and larger. So if you can kind of get that in your head, that's a lot of trucks. And um, includes um, things like trash trucks, um, buses, um, I mentioned delivery trucks, those kinds of things. So specifically, the regulation uh, will re require 50% of vehicle purchases uh, be zero emission beginning January of 2024. That's not a typo, that is eight months from now, seven months from now. 50% of every vehicle purchase that fits in this category will be electric. Um, and then 100% of all purchases will be electric by 2027. All vehicles older than 18 years must be retired or replaced. So um, you can't just hold on to your vehicles forever um, and keep them running. You, they, you have to replace them after 18 years. See, city vehicles specifically affected by this, this car regulation include 20 medium duty pickup trucks, three dump trucks, and one street sweeper. Um, Obviously, there are some major challenges to implementing this regulation or complying with this regulation. Number one is the availability of vehicles. They don't exist. Um, you can't buy these. You can't, um, you know, they're not on the market anywhere. So that's a problem. Ironically, actually, that they do make an electric street, street sweeper. So, um, but we can talk about that more later. Um, so uh, even even smaller vehicles in pickup trucks are, are not readily available for purchase either, but smaller than three quarter ton. Um, also, um, compliance with this regulation uh, will require substantial infrastructure. So even if we started today to, um, to design and install the infrastructure required to charge these trucks, uh, there's, it's physically impossible to get that installed in by 2024. And um, 
anecdotally, I've heard stories of, of um, people trying to install charging stations for vehicles and uh, number one, Edison, but number two, the equipment required for installation, I've heard of people at least two years out on purchasing equipment. Things like transformers primarily are the, um, the biggest issue. So, um, so that's the second hurdle. And then um, the last cha challenge is funding, obviously. Um, to implement just the city and purchasing the, the vehicles and installing the charging infrastructure, we're estimating uh, just short of $7 million for that, for those, those vehicles that I mentioned. So um, I mentioned that CARB is, uh, has a lot of power and authority, and built into this regulation uh, is fines of up to $20,000 per day for non-compliance. So the good news, if there is good news, is that they do, um, they do have an option for uh, applying for variance uh, or exception for the first few years. Um, and one of the, the reasons for exemption is that vehicles are not available enough. But you do need to show a uh, good faith effort to, to become in compliance. So the next regulation that is um, on the books to be implemented is a zero emission forklift regulation that's separate from the uh, mid and heavy duty vehicles. So CARB is developing regulations that would drive greater deployment of zero emission forklifts within fleets throughout the state. This regulation is one of several near term actions intended to facilitate further zero emission equipment penetration in the off road sector. And by off road, they mean basically anything that doesn't run on the freeway or, or streets. Um, so the, the implementation starts in 2026 with full implementation by 2038. Currently, the city owns two forklifts that would uh, qualify under this. And um, again, the fiscal impact of those two forklifts and charging infrastructure would be about $350,000. The uh, off-road, the, the, the last um, regulation that I'm going to talk about is the off-road diesel regulation amendment. So this is uh, all of our off-road equipment, so tractors, um, anything from uh, some off-road, not shop forklifts, but off-road type forklifts, cranes, excavators, um, skid steers, things like that, that, that the city owns and operates. So CARB has regulated uh, these types of equipment since 2008, and um, the most recent amendments were adopted in November of 2022. Uh, the, the, the requirements for this regulation are that they phase out the use of um, the older off-road diesel equipment. Uh, they prohibit the addition of new vehicles um, that aren't compliant with the latest regulations. So you can buy new vehicle, new equipment, but it has to be car compliant, they call it. It's the, the highest level of, of emissions um, requirements. And then uh, this also requires the use of renewable diesel for all diesel equipment. So the new regulations will require the replacement of two existing front end uh, loaders with new CARB compliant tier four loaders by 2028. Replacement of one new backhoe with this tier four compliant by 2030. And then the replacement of two of our stationary emergency standby generators with tier four compliant diesel generators by 2030. So the estimated cost for all of those would be about $1.2 million. So um, staff is currently coming up with a compliance strategy for all of these regulations. Um, honestly, this is a, a, a major challenge for the city. Uh, we, we won't be probably doing a whole lot in the next year, quite honestly, except for filing for exemptions. But um, this, we don't wanna obviously just kick the can down the road and uh, it'd be easy to say, oh, this is gonna be some other 
of works director's problem, not mine. But um, we want to have a strategy and a plan in place and start implementing that so we don't have to spend all of this money at once. Um, so the, uh, in summary, the California Air Resources Board is in the process of implementing three new regulations that will have a significant impact on the fiscal resources of the city of Tatchby for many years. This ill-conceived and unrealistic mandate are, is the, the latest in a long list of regulations imposed by our out-of-touch out of state boards, agencies, and political leaders that have allowed the regulatory authoritarian environment to get out of control. These new regulations alone will cost the city residents between eight and nine million dollars. As always, staff will continue to develop plans and strategies for continued compliance with all regulations and utilize public funds as efficiently as possible. Um, that kind of concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you have. Uh, Susan, go ahead. Um, <laughs> Don't. Yeah. Um, to quote a um, now gone city councilman from California City who always got bad news, he used to say, last one out, turn out the lights. And I used to think that was funny. I don't think it's funny anymore. Um, and it's interesting to me that this all coincides with the 2024 election. So it will be interesting after the election to see if it eases up a little bit, whatever. I, I don't know. It, it's um, sure go all electric, but and I didn't see you mentioned anything about um, retraining people to work on this equipment. Uh, yeah, I did not talk about that, but I I will tell you um, there are, are substantial hurdles. Um, not only for training and finding people qualified, but there are actually um, substantial requirements for shops to work on electric trucks and equipment. You, you can't just pull an electric uh, dump truck into our current shop. There are requirements for distances between metal surfaces, uh, and the type of lifts that you use, so you, because of safety reasons, you can't. You know, there's a risk of of arcing and shocking, and so there's 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 some major hurdles there as well. And of course, uh, um, nobody really knows exactly what those are because nobody had any experience with them yet. Nobody thought they'd catch on fire by themselves. Uh, yeah, the hasn't told them what they are yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, being in the business, I'm, I don't see it happening for many, many years after this regulation is supposed to go into place because there's no equipment. I'm in that purchasing equipment now for the company and there's, there's nothing available. Even the standard diesel equipment to meet the carb requirements are six to, I think my next two trucks are 2025, second quarter of 2025 when they're going to be available to me card compliant trucks uh, there's just nothing available yeah, yeah um, uh, all I know is what the, the regulations are uh, you know how uh, strict they're going to be and uh, how willing they are to going to be to give uh, exemptions and variances and kick, kick the deadlines down the road um, your guess is as good as mine. I will say, uh, you you think, oh, well, this is just California. Uh, the president is proposing basically these exact same regulations for, at the federal level. Yeah, it is a, it's a federal mandate on some state. You know, I'm hearing it from Utah. I'm hearing it from Nevada. Uh, I deal with those states. and. We've been really, they've been really lax and everything, but right now we're finding the, just the equipment or just the material for batteries are going to be shortcoming. They're not going to, they don't even have the, the equipment for the batteries. The, uh, the CARP actually went through a long public input period for this, and of course there's a lot of people that uh, objected and complained and provided um, input. Particularly the League of California Cities, they were very uh, involved in the, this um, regulation, and um, they um, they listened to the the comments, and 
essentially said, figure it out. Yeah. That, that one of their stated goals is to, it, the stated goal of CARB is to develop the EV uh, via electric vehicle industry. That's their stated goal. So. We should all go out and test them. <laughs> Look, I, what I don't understand is, are we going to be able to save our generator, to be able to charge the battery, to be able to charge the cars, or dump trucks, or whatever? Where are we going to get this energy? We don't have enough now, and, and I'm not on you, know, you, just concept, idea. Um, I'm not a real learned man, but this is stupid. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, the... Um, I just, how do you charge an electric generator? Well, there's this is not um, not required to be electric generators, um, but they are required. The generators are diesel generators are required to have the highest level of of uh, emissions equipment on them. Ogies. Yeah, I had a question. How, where, how are we going to fund this? We can't even keep our own eight and one percent sales tax, let alone support but, something like this. Well, that's what we have to figure it's out. Ridiculous. We have to figure out how to fund it. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, since there are talking about um, regulations similar to this at the federal level, there are federal federal grants becoming available for this kind of thing. Um, so that's a possibility. There are some at the state level, but much more obviously at the federal level. If they mandate it, they should. Well, I echo what everyone's saying, but this is yeah. another example of an unfunded mandate from the state. You're going to, it's going to cost it. And we're a small city with an eight or nine, ten million dollar hit in front of us just to get our equipment replaced. I mean, think of every major city in the state. This is a multi-billion dollar uh, process every, every city is going to go through. So I, I ex fully expect that the, the exceptions to the rule are going to be, you know, asking for variances is going to be the, the key for a while, but they're not going to do it forever. So you say you're going to have a strategic plan. I think that's the way to, to move forward. And like Joan said, the Measure S now is vitally important that we're allowed to keep it because as we yeah. mentioned a meeting or two ago, that we have a referendum on the ballot in 2024, there's a bunch of corporations trying to deceive the public into not allowing us to keep the measure that was passed by our residents. And that's vitally important that we keep that in the forefront so that we can use the money that we thought was gonna be, you know, uh, for one thing, and we're gonna have to add something to that to, to fund it, so. I'm preaching to the choir, I know, but so yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, just curious, do, is there a standard connection for all of these vehicles for the for the recharge? I mean, are they standard on vehicles? I mean, passenger cars now, or is there of course a whole? <laughs> is there going to be a whole in, uh, industry of adapters? No, I understand. From what I understand, that uh, electric vehicles are going towards a standard. Um, my uh, also understanding is that Tesla does not follow the standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might miss out. But you know, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I have seen studies with uh, my sitting on Kerncog of the major diesel locomotive uh, or the the freight movement uh, vehicles are going to be all electric, and they're and they're moving along in their concepts, getting away from diesel. For, for the big rigs, 18 wheelers. Yeah, that's that, that's included in this. Yes. This is that regulation. You mentioned um, uh, trains. They, there is regulation also um, being proposed for trains as well. That's, they're going to need cars being pulled behind. It's going to be the battery pack. Yeah, I think, I think they're focusing on um, diesel electric, so um, they will have diesel engines that run electric motors. So that's what it is now. That goes to way. Yes. Most are that way, yeah. Yeah. It would be interesting to watch it go down the hill. No compression, no brakes. Yeah, they, they actually um, used... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
this is frustrating for everybody oh. that tries to read the regulations. Well, like, like, like Phil it, said, right? um, imagine if you were somebody like pg e or Southern California Edison or LIDWP, uh, you know, there's they have tens of thousands of vehicles that fall into these. Yeah. So uh, be prepared because all of your, everything's going to go up. Anything else? Thank you, Don. Thanks for the great news. Don't persecute this. Don't yeah. shoot the messenger. Shoot the messenger. No, don't shoot the no. Appreciate your working on this, Don. Uh, next, uh, Jay, uh, our De Development Services Director reports. Sure. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Well, I have relatively good news compared to that, so. Um, <laughs> All right. First time for everything. Um, so tonight before you, uh, asking you to consider the approval of tentative track map number 7440, known as the Pinion South Condominiums Project. So a little bit of background for you. Um, in uh, I'll start a little earlier. In April of 2022, uh, we brought before the Planning Commission a uh, two projects combined into a single application to the Planning Commission to consider two condominium projects, the intersection of Pinion and Curry. Uh, one on the south side of Pinion and one on the north side of Pinion, both of them west of Curry. Um, and uh, <clears throat> subsequent to that time, since that was approved, that development project, the concept, the architecture, the layout, et cetera, uh, both of those projects were conditioned to execute the associated track map, which the Subdivision Map Act, uh, federal law requires uh, certain steps and procedures uh, for, uh, for forming a condominium development. And so it has to be designated as a condominium lot. Um, and you achieve that by going through the mapping process. Um, and so subsequent to that time, the applicant has, um, has advanced both projects. One is now in advance of the other, which is why I'm only bringing one of them to you tonight, um, which is the Pinion South project. Um, in April of just last month, April, uh, the City Planning Commission approved a resolution recommending that you all consider and approve tentative track map number 7440. Uh, so the project in general is a 19 unit condominium development located on a 1.6 acre vacant lot zoned R2, which is appropriate zoning for a condominium development um, in, this, uh, in the location that I referenced. So briefly, in case there are any questions, it is not exactly at the corner there. There is an older house at the, in the <coughs> southwest corner of Pinion and Curry. This development is in the vacant land immediately west of that house. So that house is unaffected by this project other than that they'll have new neighbors. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so attached um, uh, to this staff report, I provided copies of the proposed map and more importantly, the detailed planning commission staff report um, that, that outlines the greater details associated with adopting this map. Uh, pursuant to the municipal code section 1716.070, um, we have to make certain findings to uh, adopt a tentative map. Those are listed in the staff report, and I believe we can make those findings tonight. And so therefore, I recommend, pursuant to that section 1716.060 of the Tatchby Municipal Code, I recommend that you adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Tatchby approving tentative track map number 7440 and the conditions of approval and finding that a notice of exemption satisfies the Environmental Quality Act. That concludes my report. Thank you, Jay. Do we have any questions from the public? Uh, do we have any questions from council? Make a motion to accept. I had a question. Oh, Bill. No. So at some later point down the line, we'll see uh, elevations and materials and concept of, of the building, what it might look like. Actually, those are in the staff report. So planning commission, in, according to our zoning code, holds the authority to make that decision for the city. Yeah, I can see that. Way. I just saw the track map here. Yeah, it's, uh, well, the whole staff was, did the whole staff report make it? Yeah, I got it. I was just curious what they were going to look like. Uh, Let me see if I got the whole staff report in there. I was, I wanted to. I don't think I did. Unless I didn't scroll down all the nope. way. No, I just have the map. That would be my mistake then. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I, curious what they're going to look like. Some of the materials. There are two stories, um, and they are. Um, they actually go back up there, Tori. A couple of the best I've got is that site plan. I apologize for that oversight. Um, so they are two-story units. So uh, units one above the other. Um, there are. Um, 
And so what you see in a U or an L shape there along the uh, western and southern side of the property is a single building that is divided into the condominium units. Um, I believe the applicant is here too. They might be able to provide some details on the amenities in the building um, if you had questions about that. But um, happy to provide those. A reminder that tonight you guys are considering the map only. Right. And that the I'm planning commission approved the architecture. Like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's a tidy little site. They're providing a little community garden for folks that uh, might uh, want to do that because they, they won't have that space if they uh, live in a condominium unit and a couple other amenities. There's a single driveway access to Pinion. That's the, the primary access to the development. It is well parked, meaning there's about one and a half spaces per unit. So that meets the, that exceeds the city's parking requirement. Yeah. Um, and so I've already begun to work on the HOA formation documents. So we look forward to a healthy and thriving little community there. That would be good. Yeah. How many units total? 19 in this location. 19? Yes, sir. Are we going to need a traffic signal there one of these days? That's a wonderful, like, uh, you know, you want me to put my thumb in the wind on that? Yeah, probably one day. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this development would, yeah, wouldn't cause enough minutes, traffic. But still, traffic. we're getting uh, more and more housing. In I really the think the connection from Pinion over to Denison, which paved today, I don't know if really? you guys saw that, it all paved out today. Yeah. Um, isn't quite going to get us there either if you're not that this is on topic but when we get over to tucker with pinion one day yes. that'll that'll probably start to answer that question all right so okay that's just me speculating though so i see the 19 is that like a clubhouse or something in the bottom right hand corner or yeah, that's just some amenities. The very bottom right corner is uh, is the community garden concept where okay. you could go in, you'd have a little raised garden bed that was yours and you could do what you wanted with okay, it. Okay, I didn't know that was a building or what. Yeah, there's a little uh, pergola area. I think it's like a picnic area, Okay. Uh, Mayor Davies, where you can uh, you can kind of reserve it and go have your family there and spend, spend okay. some time outside. Good. I'll second the motion. Unless there was already, you already no. seconded it. Mm -hmm. I was going to, but he had a question. He had a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, vote, please. A roll call vote. Councilmember Sackowitz? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Wiggins? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yes. Mayor Davies? Yes. 5 0 vote. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Okay, uh, to track man, report, uh, report to council regarding city, manage, uh, center, city manager reports, please. Thank you, Mayor Davies. Um, as Jay mentioned, uh, Griffith uh, Construction, our contractor that we hired for Pinion Street, um, paved today. So they're just finishing up with the pavement today. So that's a milestone. However, they still need to seal it. They need to stripe it, those sorts of things. So we several more weeks before the road is officially open, but excited to report that that project is going along nicely, high quality, on schedule, on budget. So very excited about that. And it's gonna enhance our transportation network in the city and in the community. So really excited about that. The second uh, thing is, last weekend we had Love to Hatchaby and others out and about, and um, they were cleaning areas, Tucker Road, to Hatchaby Boulevard, uh, Antelope Run, uh, various places, and so they were doing a lot of litter cleanup, but also spreading the love. They were uh, handing out gift cards to local businesses, to citizens. So I want to just express my sincere appreciation to that group of people. Love to Hatchby. I love Love to Hatchby. They're just really giving and putting back into this community and, and, and helping us. As you know, Don has a crew, a full-time crew of people that, um, employees, team members that are picking up litter and mowing weeds, but it's always nice to have some extra volunteer help. Tachby is full of great volunteers, so thank you to love to Hatchby. And that's all I have, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, council member reports, Keith? No, thank you. Susan? No, it was all nice and warm and now it's not. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Phil? Uh, just a report, uh, last Friday, uh, Senator Sharon, uh, Shannon Grove set up a meeting 
uh, with uh, the new director of Caltrans, Tony Tavares, uh, one of the, several of his staff. Uh, the director of District 9 was on the Zoom meeting, uh, Jay and Greg, and I attended uh, regarding the truck climbing lanes. And the we're just um, impressing on them the very necessary, uh, this this uh, ongoing need that we've had for years. Back in uh, about, I've seen on Kerncog, I've seen things back to 2000, but I think it was 2005 was one of the bigger uh, studies that was done. Okay, now we're talking 18, 20 years later. So uh, I continued my whining session to the new director as I have from all the previous directors that we've had on Caltrans. Uh, of my my tenure on there and still whining about why we don't have the truck climbing lanes. You can call it whining, but I'm calling it bring it to their attention until we get it done. So uh, Greg and Jay, if you want to jump in with some timelines, we were pleased that, you know, I'm not pleased at the timeline, but it's better than <coughs> it was hoped So I'll ask Jay to come to the podium and while he's coming up to the podium, Yes, I would just like to thank um, Councilmember Smith, past Mayor Smith, uh, for his diligence in pushing this. Um, State Highway 58, this, this section, it's not even in the city of Tehachapi, uh, but it does matter for our city, it does matter for our county, and for our state, and for our entire nation. The truck traffic, the vehicle traffic, has grown exponentially. It is, it is now to the point where it's almost gridlock. We have areas that are just falling apart in the slow lane, and then we have, of course, the, the climbing lanes, and we're past the point of climbing lanes. It really needs to be three lanes both ways. It's a state highway, it's not an interstate, which is very interesting uh, because it's the extension of I-40. But um, Jay has work, been working diligently with the uh, Caltrans District 9, and uh, which is out of Bishop and then also Fresno because we're at the end of the two cul-de-sacs as we've talked many times. Uh, Caliente is the, is the border basically. And uh, we engaged the assistance of Senator Grove which I think really assisted us. Um, Senator Grove was on the confirmation committee for the new Caltrans director and we seized that moment. And I talked to uh, Senator Grove about this I've um, been on the phone with her many, many times and met in person and we thought now is a great time to really educate our new state director and make certain that he understands the importance of this. It's not just as you put it, Mr. Smith, you know, uh, us whining. It's, it's, it's really, it's critically important for all of us, and I mean all of us from coast to coast. Um, so we had a great meeting, a really good meeting, probably the best meeting we've ever had on Friday with um, this, this group that we're talking about. And uh, the new straight director uh, really heard us, I believe, and was committed to uh, making certain that this project moves forward. Uh, we offered all the assistance we could help with uh, at the city of Tehachapi. You know, they, they need some right of way, different things, acquisition, and I told him, I said, I bet I can, I bet I know the person that owns that land. Let me help. Um, and so we are, you know, this is yet another project uh, that we're working on. So many of the things that the city of Tehachapi works on um, is pushed down from the state or maybe outside of our arena, outside of our city limits, but it matters. Um, and uh, the city of Tehachapi is full of true leaders, true professionals that really can assist our partners. And that's what this project is all about. And we want to make sure that this gets done and gets done in a timely fashion. You know, we talk about taxpayer dollars. Taxpayers don't care who you, what, you know, whether you're local or state or federal, they just want it done. And, um, you know, we talk about, Don was talking about the, um, the mandates coming down from Sacramento. You know, these, when we were, Don was forming the, the report, he used the word ill-conceived. And as my opinion, I said, heck yeah, it is ill-conceived. You know, the state of California taxpayers are not going to save the world. If you're not careful, you're going to break the backs. And we need to prioritize programs and projects. And this climbing lane is one of the projects that we must prioritize and we must create a, a process in which the public 
you know, public entities and the private world can get into appropriately, you know, electric vehicles. They are the future. I think we can all agree to that. But it needs to be processed so that we don't bankrupt the taxpayer. And so this project that we're talking about, Jay can fill in some details, but we've got some commitments, some dates. We're working with um, uh, um, House Leader McCarthy. Sorry, I struggled there for a minute. I was, I was trying to say Congressman, but now he's the leader mm -hmm. of the House, and he is also committed. He's we've talked to him many times, and uh, this this I think is going to be a bipartisan effort at the state level to get this done sooner than later. We've been yeah. working burning the midnight oil on this project and many others. So yeah, maybe if I blended a couple things together, but I wanted to make sure that I said that in a public forum, and, and Jay, if you could share some yeah, a couple of this would be details great. for you. Uh, I would agree, too, this is probably the most positive response we've received from Caltrans to date. Uh, we are only talking at this time about segment two of the truck climbing lanes, which is from the Caliani cutoff to Keene, roughly. That would be adding the truck climbing lane only in that section. That is the worst section, windiest and steepest. Um, and so all the professionals agree that's the, that's the place to target initially. Um, in addition to that, the Caltrans has had already programmed a $165 million project to repave the downhill side of 58 from, um, shoot, where's the starting place? Right where it gets really rough. You guys all know that's well, five, about five miles right outside right. of town. <laughs> yeah, it gets it's 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 designated from Tucker. <laughs> Tucker Road to Key yeah. is the designation. It's not quite that far because they're going to do a piece a little way from Tucker, a couple miles down right. the road, down to Keene, and they're going to repave it and they're going to change some of the geometry because we keep having accidents in exactly the same place because they slide off the road. Um, and so the real push in this call was actually two projects, was to try to get accelerated the first truck climbing lane and get it combined with that large repave and read geometry and not lose time yeah. by making that combination. And so uh, I don't want to, we need to manage expectations for the public in the way I speak this, so yeah. respectfully, like there was no uh, like commitment. There was a commitment to recognizing a problem and needing to figure out a solution. There was not a, hey, we have the money, we're going to do it, but there was universal agreement that that it needed to get done, that it was a priority, that we ought to combine the two, and that we ought to do them by and get started by 2026. Uh, so uh, that's that's the goal. The other thing that was discussed that you guys was, and this is less a Tehachapi issue, but also of regional importance was discussed was the um, Cal City uh, overpass there. But you know some of the folks who, who might hear about this, it's uh, a frontage road. That frontage road, and then the crossover over 58. So if you're coming out of Cal City and going straight onto the base, I don't know which gate that is. Is that the north that's gate? North gate. North gate. North gate. Uh, right now, that's deadly pulling out of there and trying to get on the 58 and uh, so there's been a plan to have a crossover so that you don't have to get on the 58 a frontage road to a crossover so that was also pressed forward and that may have legs as well um, but for the first time we heard the Caltrans director say I've been there I know what you're talking about and and then looking directly at Senator Grove and saying, I hear you, we, we hear the issue, let us get to work on Senator it. Senator Grove is a true partner of ours. Yeah. He's pushing He's hard be, for these projects. And, and both of these projects, one to the east of the city limits and one to the west of the city limits, but they matter. I've always said it matters for our neighbors to be healthy, whether it's fiscally healthy or leadership healthy, you know, the environment must be healthy in Kern County and beyond, and these two projects matter. Yeah, so it was good. It was, uh, bank, frankly, better than I expected it to go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I figured I was giving up some time I, on Friday. I wrote then. down the comment from the director of Caltrans himself, Tony Tavares. Uh, at the end there, he uh, commented this was a, an extremely significant route. So I was impressing on them when I first started my dissertation, of it, as I always do, <laughs> that this is not a city of Tehachapi project, folks. Okay, this is a city attached to going to fund climbing lanes of $165 million worth from those from General Beale Road up to, to Tehachapi. Yeah. So I reiterated that it's just the city of Tehachapi has had a member on Kerncog for 29 years shouting about this. That's why city of Tehachapi keeps coming up, but it's not our project, it's the state of California project. And we impressed on them, it's their project, and they need to, and like our director of uh, 
executive director of uh, Kerncog was there as well, Aaron Hakimi, and he said this is their project and they need to fund it. And we really put their feet to the fire and I think, you know, like I, I agree with you. And he came off with a statement that said it's extremely significant and I wrote down from Ryan McDermott uh, from Caltrans District 9 in Bishop, most important route in District 9. That was his comment. Mm -hmm. So I will be reminding them of those of those two comments as we well said. So we are going to yeah. we've scheduled meetings we have one in two weeks. We have already been set a meeting in two weeks for the same group. Okay, yeah. perfect. Try to keep on them. So we'll see where it takes us. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I want to publicly thank you, Jay, for your efforts with dealing with uh, all the logistics with Kern Cog and Greg. Well, I, I mean, it's taken a team effort here to keep I the, didn't tell you guys. I asked after that meeting for an update to their little chart of all the routes in California for where all the truck traffic's going. Yes. And so I have a chart from this 2017, so I'm, they said they'd give it to me. So I'm going to be curious to see what's changed, you know, like how, what percentage of growth have we seen in just the last six years on 58? I think the number's going to be shocking. I think it's a lot higher. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and see if they would have done it several years ago when it was first suggested. Yeah. It would have been about half the cost well, or more. We are the stepchild of two districts. Yeah. And District so. 6 in Fresno is, for, uh, is the, is the yeah. segment one. They cover the one for Beale Road up to... It's the Caliani cutoff is where the line is. Okay. Yeah. And there, that, that Caliani it becomes District 9. And we're also the stepchild of District 9, as we refer to it as two cul-de-sacs at the tail end of two districts. And unless we shout and keep shouting, uh, and that's what we're doing. The city tax free leadership is full of planners. And not just Jay's department, Don plans public works. Ahmed plans finances. We plan our future. And that's what's happening here. We're plan we're assisting others in planning our region. Well, and I every time I drive up, I go, oh, we definitely need this. But when it truly happens, it's probably going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it, it count on two years you know? of misery. Sorry, yeah. no, and I'm there's right. no way to build that without it disrupting traffic. One but lane for everybody. That's going to be interesting. Well, I concept. remember when they blasted. Okay, this is nothing. There is a concept of building the climbing lane first, and then repaving. You know, and. Then, Planning needs to happen, that's for sure. And we're to that point now. Yeah. They get it. They'll do their best. Definitely. I, I remember as as <coughs> as living here in the nineteen sixties, um, when they widened mm -hmm. fifty eight. He used to go to King. Yeah. And then it was too late from King to to Tatchby. And I lost the transmission out of a car because a rock fell off the truck and took my transmission out. But that's the way it goes. Yeah. The other day, my wife and I were driving from Tasby to Bakersfield. For fun, we decided to count the trucks. Now, this is just to morning drive from Tucker. Over 350 trucks. Yeah. yeah. If we see going down the hill. And that's in the morning. Yeah. Well. But the elephant race is coming back up the hill, yeah. or what's yeah. dangerous? Mm -hmm. The yeah. figures Down right now show bad. an average yeah. daily count of about 7,500 trucks per day, in, or 7,000. About 7,000, 7, yeah. Okay. And that that's the old number, though. And we feel that's that that number is a, a dated number from a, a former report. It's probably closer to 9,000 trucks averaged per day but we're going to get that in higher than that that was a 2017 yeah. number and that's so the like, jays uh, has to be updated yeah. fourth or fifth busiest route for trucks in the state third third okay keith they opened that lane from Keene up on 72 because they just opened it after i started up here 50 years ago so there you go well yeah. we have to remember trucks uh, move the logistics from los angeles to San Bernardino and to those areas. Yeah. So to line, well, even possibly to Kern with, with Mojave Port. Um, but now why, why drive to LA to drive out of LA when you can come up this route? Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, that was my single little council member comment. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Uh, Phil, I really do appreciate all the time that you spent on this with Current Cog yeah, over the years. Sure. Welcome. Yeah. So, appreciate everybody. I'd uh, love to see it. Jay, Don, yeah, and Greg. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, yes, sir.
Oh, I'm sorry. Fire department, did you have anything you wanted to bring before us? Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, uh, the meeting is adjourned. We do not have closed session tonight. I don't.